Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, retired meteorologist, and today is Tuesday, August 29th, and we're watching very carefully Hurricane Idalia because that is a already a strong Category 1 hurricane on the way to becoming a Category 2 and perhaps making landfall as a Category 3 hurricane. So with that being said, let's go to the maps right now. The forecast map from the National Hurricane Center, the cone uh, forecast, shows the hurricane uh, moving across the northeast portion of the Gulf of Mexico, making landfall as a major hurricane sometime around 8 o'clock tomorrow morning uh, in around that time, sunrise or so, in the Big Bend area of Florida. And that could have winds of anywhere between 115 and 125 miles per hour. 125, that makes it a strong Category 3, flirting with Category 4 if it gets up above 130 miles an hour. But then as the storm moves on land, it'll start to weaken. But still, when it's in South Georgia around the Valdosta area, right there in the Georgia-Florida border, it still could be a hurricane with 70 to 80 mile per hour winds. But then as it approaches the upper portions of Southeast Georgia, moving across the Hinesville area, Glenville, uh, east of Statesboro towards Savannah and Springfield to Guyton. Uh, it could still be a strong tropical storm with 60 mile per hour winds, but it will be weakening as it continues to move off toward the east northeast. And then as a, a moderate tropical storm, as it moves across the eastern portions of South Carolina. Looking at the warning maps across the area and advisories, a hurricane warning is in effect across the Midwest coast of Florida across the Big Bend into the Appalachia Bay area of Florida. And then a tropical storm warning in effect from the middle portions of the east coast of Florida all the way across the Georgia coast uh, into the South Carolina coast up to around Charleston. And then a uh, tropical storm watch in effect for the upper portions of southeast of, of uh, South Carolina into southeastern North Carolina. Now let's take a look at the satellite imagery right now. And there's the storm. Farther to the east, you got powerful Hurricane Franklin uh, to the uh, west of Bermuda. There's Bermuda right over there. It's got about 125 mile an hour winds. But there you have uh, Idalia. And Idalia is uh, uh, gaining strength and getting better organized. It's going over that warm water now of the eastern Gulf of Mexico, where it will be picking up fuel and energy out of that water and then continues to uh, increase in strength, perhaps getting up, to, as I just mentioned, 125 miles per hour before making landfall over here in the uh, northeast portion of um, the Gulf of Mexico around the Big Bend area of Florida. Now, going back to the... Um, maps itself looking at the conditions across our region first of all we are beginning to see some showers and thunderstorms being pushed ahead of the front it's uh, of the storm itself this is not part of the hurricane uh, however it is a uh, uh, it's being developed from the push of the moisture into our area uh, and we're seeing showers and thunderstorms across our region but looking at the radar summary from the uh, Key West, Florida. And this is on my website, savannapat.name. I have this radar and I'll be following the radar as it gets a little bit further north. I'll switch it over to the Tampa radar, then Tallahassee radar, and so forth and so on, and Valdosta radar as it continues to move off toward the north. But there is the eye right now, about 170 miles to the uh, west northwest of Key West, Florida, where the radar site uh, uh, is located. Very heavy squalls already moving in across the southwest counties of Florida as that storm moves ad advances northward. Now, the conditions across the region, the forecast um, uh, computer models are showing that the storm moving off toward the north northeast and making landfall somewhere around sunrise tomorrow morning and then moving inland and beginning to weaken. But one thing I want to uh, point out with this map right here is the fetch of winds coming in off the Atlantic Ocean, pushing the water toward the coast of the upper parts of Northeast Florida, all of the coast of Georgia and Southern and Eastern South Carolina. Now, this fetch of water is going to drive the tide higher than usual, about two to four feet higher than usual. And right now we also have a full moon. And looking at some of the uh, precip precipitation expected with this system, uh, I'm going to look at the tides in just a minute. But looking at the uh, precipitation forecast, this is the uh, North America model. And one of the things we've been noticing over the last couple of uh, model runs, computer model runs, is the shifting toward the west of the center of the track. And that's shifting the 
heavier rainfall further inland uh, across uh, our area of Georgia and into South Carolina. Coastal areas might not get as much rain as we first thought. Now, we're still going to get quite a bit of wind and the, the uh, tidal surge, but the heaviest rains are going to be inland around centered, uh, uh, looks like about 50 miles either side of Highway 1, US 1, um, and uh, that's going to be some very heavy rains in this area. We're talking uh, three to six inches, up to eight inches in some locations. Let's take a look at another model, the... Um, well, the GFS, the global forecast system, about the same thing. Uh, the other one was high resolution. How about the uh, Canadian model? About the same thing, a little bit more rain, a uh, broader area of rain. What about the ECMWF, the uh, European model? About the same as the, uh, the other two. So that looks like we're going to see quite a bit of rain across the inland areas, particularly uh, west of Highway 301 and or 341, 3, 301 and uh, over into uh, the center portions of Georgia and the eastern half of South Carolina. Expect flooding rain conditions across there, anywhere from uh, you know, four to six inches, some areas eight inches of rain. We might see some isolated areas up to 12 inches of rain, and this is in a 24 to 36 hour time period. So that's a lot of rain coming down in a very short period of time, and that's gonna cause uh, flooding. Looking at the uh, digital data forecast, uh, there you can see quite a bit of rain expected across this area here. This is the combination of the computers and the humans putting the together the forecast. Uh, it's called the National Blend of Models, and it shows very heavy rains across the interior portions of southeast Georgia and into the eastern half of South Carolina. I believe I got a close-up view. Yeah, here, look at Statesboro, about seven inches or so, a little less uh, in Savannah now, about four inches, 3.9. Uh, Hilton Head, about the same, three inches of rain or so. Uh, but inland, uh, over in the, um, you know, the Jessup area and Baxley area, very heavy rains to be associated with this. Now, over in the southern counties, uh, you're also going to see some very strong winds as the, the storm will still be a hurricane when it gets into this area of around the Valdosta region and in toward Baxley. You might get hurricane force winds in Baxley too. It'll be close, but you're also going to get some very, very heavy rains. Now, uh, locking, I wanted to get back to the tides. Uh, the tide wasn't all that high this morning. Uh, the predicted high was uh, uh, seven, uh, a little bit like seven point four feet. It got up to eight point, almost two feet. Um, but tonight, the high tide will be much higher. Uh, it should get up to about eight point six feet or so. But let's take a look at this graphic I made over here, and uh, this shows the tidal surge expected uh, from the storm being uh, pushing the water inland across Georgia and the South Carolina coast. And we're expecting that water to be about two to four feet higher than the predicted tide level. So with that being said, let's take a look at the tide level. And the moon tonight will be almost full, be a full moon tomorrow night, and it's a super full moon. That means the moon is, well, it's gonna be bigger and it will be closest to the earth uh, that it has been all year round, only in about 221,000 miles. The average distance from the earth to the moon is 239,000 miles. So it's gonna be much, much closer tonight. And of course, the closer it is, the more gravitational pull it has, bringing up the tides that much higher. And looking at the uh, forecast for the tide, we already passed the uh, morning high tides and low tides. So looking at the evening high tide at 737 uh, for Pulaski, 8.6 feet. Now, if you add two to four feet to that, let's round that off to, this just to go eight feet, uh, that's 10 to 12 feet possibility of the high tide tonight. And then tomorrow morning, the high tide will be uh, at about eight feet again uh, at around eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Again, adding that two to four feet, you could see 10 to 12 feet of tidal surge moving in. Now, remember flooding begins at about 9.7, 9.8 on the Highway 80 at Fort Pulaski, actually between the Bull River and the uh, Lazaretto Creek. You start getting water over the road at about 9.8 feet. So if you got 11 feet of water, that's going to be a lot of, of flooding and a lot of the uh, lagoons and the marshes will be overflowing during the high tide tonight and tomorrow morning. And again, perhaps tomorrow night, not so much in the uh, uh, Glen County and Camden County areas, even McIntosh, because the winds will be becoming more westerly there, but still southerly and strong uh, southerly flow coming in across the upper portions of Georgia and very strong southerly flow in the South Carolina. So there you can, again, tomorrow evening could see a very high tide of around uh, 10 to 12 feet. Let's talk about the winds across the area. On my website, you can go down to the um, precision forecast data 
and let's click on clouds and winds. Uh, clouds is a given. It's going to be cloudy tomorrow. Uh, but the winds, they're going to be in the 30 to 40 mile an hour range of 40 to 50 miles an hour across many locations. These are the average wind gusts. Uh, most of the uh, winds will be in the afternoon and the evening hours. Very strong winds uh, across the uh, greater Savannah area, Chatham County, Tybee Island up to 45 miles an hour, perhaps even higher at times. And then as we go into the interior portions of southeastern Georgia, you're going to see those winds uh, all the way up into the, well into the 40s, even some 50s. And then the southern counties where, you know, the storm comes in tomorrow morning, it still could be a hurricane. Uh, you're going to see some very strong winds. The Hunter, uh, over 70 mile per hour wind gusts possible, and also in the St. Simons area, uh, 60 to 70 or 60 to 65 mile per hour winds, perhaps. Uh, so you got that to worry about. And then also over into Hilton Head and the Buford County area, uh, Collington County area, uh, not as much because the storm will have weakened by the time it got up to there, but still you're going to have some very strong winds in excess of 35 to 45 miles an hour. So with that, uh, let's look at the rain totals uh, with the digital data forecast. And in the greater Savannah area, expecting about three to four inches of rain, as you can see there. And interior portions of Georgia, a lot more further inland, particularly between 301 and US 1. Uh, expect to see quite a bit of rain. Uh, for example, just up of 4.3 inches of rain expected. Uh, Hazelhurst, over six inches, wow. And um, uh, Douglas, yeah, you're getting much closer to the core of the storm. Uh, Claxton, uh, you're up there uh, around 301. Uh, six inches of rain. Statesboro, where are we down here? Uh, let's bring it down. And Statesboro, um, there it is. Uh, well, almost seven inches of rain there. So yeah, quite a bit of rain across the interior portions of uh, Southeast Georgia. Georgia, uh, Sylvania, and uh, Vidalia, both uh, between six and a half and seven inches of rain there. Into South Carolina, uh, in the uh, Hilton Head, Bluffton, Buford area, uh, um, Hardyville, expect to see not quite as much, but still enough, uh, three to four inches of rain there. And uh, Buford, about 3.77. Uh, going into Ridgeland, about seven inches or four inches, 4.7 inches of rain in Hampton. As you go further west, you're getting more rain. So there you can see Hampton getting about uh, a forecast about 5.82 inches of rain. So now is the time to start thinking about cleaning up the yard, uh, picking up loose materials that could be blown around into the wind, and uh, uh, you know if you have any of those flags out there that you, you, you know the U.S. flag or garden flags and so forth. Uh, you might want to take them down because uh, you can take them down or you can let the winds take them down. If the winds take them down, you don't know where they're going to be when you go out to get them. So it's a good idea to bring them in right now uh, while you have the chance. Also, I was taking down my telescopes. There I am taking down the telescope because I don't want to take any chances of any large limbs flying through the air and hitting that uh, telescope. Actually, I got two big telescopes I'm bringing down uh, to protect them from the weather conditions. Also chairs, patio material, uh, uh, and uh, umbrellas and so forth. I got a large umbrella here. I'm taking that down as well and then laying it down so it doesn't blow over. Also garbage pails, you might want to uh, secure those. You won't, don't want to see those blowing across uh, the yards and your, your neighbor yards as well. So it's going to be a rough day tomorrow. It's going to get very windy starting in the morning, getting into the afternoon hours and the winds will start really kicking up. And the worst of the storm in our area looks like it's going to be in the late afternoon and throughout the evening to nighttime hours. By Thursday, the winds will be swinging around more from the northwest and north and that will be bringing in drier air and somewhat cooler air too. As a matter of fact, a quick look at the forecast. This actually doesn't look all that bad. You know, we got the big holiday weekend coming up, the Labor Day weekend, and it looks like lots of sunshine and temperatures in the 80s, mid to upper 80s. But look at the lows in the mid to upper 60s. That means low humidity. So it's going to be some very nice weather conditions for this Labor Day weekend coming up. But of course, we have to get through uh, today and tomorrow and Thursday morning uh, before we can get into this very nice weather. Looks like it's going to be some good weather to clean up outside. Anyway, stay tuned right here on my YouTube channel and also my uh, weather page, uh, savannapat.name. A lot of great information available for you right there. So uh, keep an eye on the storm and stay safe. See ya. Bye.